work from. Um, I don't know how much differences there are. Are there any key points that you want to point out why you see differences? I was just working with you, God, actually. Okay. To me, I, to me, the most important language that I think we care about is the, um, the actual charge to the commissioner. Um, and making it clear that, um, that when it comes to implementing and that, you know, doing anything relative to this statute, to the, to the new federal law, that he needs to go to this uh, oversight committee and, and get permission from them first. I think we're all in agreement that that's, that's the intent. Um, so how, I mean, I, I, I don't know why everyone keeps saying, you know, how strong this language is. I don't, I, I don't know. I would make it any stronger or anything clearer. I don't know. And where, where is it? Where is it nebulous? I guess is where I guess I'm talking about. So, um, I guess. Do you want to keep reading here, Andrew, or do you, do you want to? Um, do we have Alex explain what the latest? I guess there were just a, a couple uh, things that I missed um, from the first time the insurance department set their bill over to. Okay. Find a work from, but okay. I think it's still needs to be. Yeah, uh, Alex, you got one to send on the fourth here. Yeah, I uh, apologize. Given that I know we have one other department who's here and only cares about one section, why don't we do your section next? Oh, and that way we can leave you off on uh, So 
we're turning to page three um, and uh, section two of the bill is um, not in 420L, it is in section 161. The sponsoring watch deals with uh, Medicaid program and, and assistance programs. Right. And uh, given that the federal um, uh, statute did have some references to Medicare, we wanted to also include you guys in this oversight committee. I don't need to talk about what their concerns are. Uh, if, if, if you can tell us that this paragraph is fine and you're all set with it, okay, uh, or if you I, want some changes well, to it, we would John Walsh is helping the services was the brief for this brief. He's the brief school full here. I'm in trouble with that. <laughs> How many years has he been working with? Eleven. Yeah, right. He hired me. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it really is a question of understanding the scope of what you put here. That's the uh, biggest issue. And when it talks about rulemaking proceeding relating to or under the law, I'm not sure I know what the scope of relating to is. One of the things, a lot of grants that we get now, for instance, are being rebranded in the sense that they're all related to health care reform, even though it's that we're doing nothing different than we used to do or whatever. And so I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to avoid is some argument that why didn't you come and give you know, the rule on this such and such a thing or whatever before that. So I don't know sort of the scope of what relating to means. The issue of what is a standard. Standard is not a term that we use. Rules, I understand. Rules are you file as a process thing. I don't know what the standard is in this context as to whether, or sort of, again, it's a question of scope of what you're trying to regulate. Uh, it's something we do, somebody says, is that a standard or not a standard? I, don't, I wouldn't know what the answer to that is. The, the other issue I have is the relationship of this committee to GELCAR. You've got to go to this committee you know, before you initiate the process. So, in, right. so you come in, you say, this is what I want, and you get approval. Right. Gelcar could disapprove. They could request some, you know, some changes yep. or whatever. Where do you go uh, after that? Do you have to come back? Do you have to get further approval? It is uh, I, I don't know what the interaction is. Okay. And that that concern. I think I can that. answer that one. Okay. okay. The the intent of this would be is long before you go to Gelcar. Okay. That you uh, you usually when you come up with a rule, you go through a hearings process and. Before you go to gel car. Long before that. Yeah. So in other words, literally, the moment you say, the light bulb goes on and say, we need to do this, or we think we want to do this, or something needs to be done. Okay. <laughs> There's the, really the very initial <laughs> thought, yeah. okay, that if it ha hangs its hat, it, in other words, if it, it is somewhat related to the new federal 111, 148, um, acts, then yes, we would want you to come to this committee first and say, we think we need to do this, or we want to do this, whichever way you feel okay. compelled to phrase it. And then this committee would then say, yes, that's fine, go forward, or no, we think you're buying into the federal law but we're, that we're not, the state is not ready to buy into. And that they would shut you down long before you even had your hearings process, and certainly long before you ever went to jail car. Okay, now, well, that, now having said that, yeah. I guess I'll just go around the room and see if everybody else agrees with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that okay. raises some other questions to me then. We could have an idea, say, well, we think we should have a, we need a rule about such and so, right. and, and, and it's, just, it's a concept. Right. And uh, my assumption was that this committee would want more than that. They'd want to say, well, let's see a draft of the rule. Let's see what the details of it are. Let's see how you plan to carry out that provision, whatever. And so that what I inferred from this process was that we would have the idea and the rule, and we come before you and say, here is the rule that we intend to file to start the process, and that you would go through that rule and say yay, nay, or whatever. That's what I inferred. If it's just a generalized, do we need a rule, then that's, that's certainly easier, but I I suspect that there's not agreement. I, I think that we would want both. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not trying to hamstring the department in its uh, function or thinking through. I think once
once action is about to be taken, that's when you need to, uh, uh, because we don't want to be burdened with micromanaging an agency, but when, you know, the, 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 the worry here is that we're going to get uh, locked into something, bound into something, taken down a road, we don't want to get out. Right. And so once action is about to be taken, I think that's when you're in front of the So where are you? Is that, where is that in jail car? Um, I'd say it's before the jail car process, but it's it's after the, not just it's a concept that we're thinking about or that kind of thing. Think about whatever you want. Um, but once you're ready to get to the drafting stage, it's time to, it's time to let so us see. So it would be after their, their hearings? No, I think we're still on the front end. No, I, I would I would not read that we have to hear it. It would be before we right. actually initiate the rulemaking process. Oh, that's correct. Right. Which is which is the right. filing, and then there's a fiscal okay. statement, and whatever. We know we know what that what's well, that process. Why is there a hearing means. process before the bill card? There, there is. It's there a public hearing. Right. 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 I thought that that's what I wanted. About, where we are with the public hearing? Where are we before? No, that that's that? later on. What we do. So I thought there was a public hearing before you went to jail card. There yeah. is. That's what, what I was we, focusing on trying to figure out. Is it okay. it what we do with that process is there's a filing that takes place uh, okay. before a hearing, before you go to the or whatever. Okay. So it's that filing. That's the title, sort of like what that we call it. That starts the process. And it's about a three-month process. Right. So okay. I mean, based on what well, John's saying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you back? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I'm hearing is that somewhere before we take that first step to put a rule in production that okay. we would come to this body. Right. Okay. Follow-up question. Um, this bill takes effect on pop passage. What if there are rules that are in production that aren't going to, because it's a three to four month process, that wouldn't get to jail car until after the bill passes? Uh, so tell us, that tell us now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell us now because you're looking at probably who's going to be on that this oversight committee. So. If you've got something that's right in there right now that's related to Public Act 111 through 148, you better tell us. You, you, you better get tell us now. Yeah. Well, I, I would need to go back and see if there is okay. something on the list. And there's one that I sort of have a question mark about. But oh, good. There, I, but there are other departments that are... So that might be helpful for us to you know understand what we're doing here. So if you had an example, uh, we could see how we could... Well, well, perhaps so. Part of the problem I've got, of course, is that your idea about was, and, and Senator Weiss, we're different about where in this process we, we, we'd actually I approach the committee. We're ready. Plus, there's a question of what degree of formality the rule, prospective rule, has at that point. Okay. It's, it, I assume it's something, Senator Weiss, it's something beyond an idea, maybe something a little less than the, the final rule we would file, but I don't know what. Well, help me out because when you're on jail card, when when you do the title, we begin the process, and uh, you have something before you do your your first initial public hearing. That's true. Okay. So would that be what we what we would want to see? In other words, that uh, after the title, after the thing's been issued, yes. Yeah. Um, it would seem to me that they draw up a proposed rule to then have the public hearings and then fine tune it with all the interested parties. I would think we would want to see the proposed rule before, I mean, that's the law rule. It will be changed by the time it gets to Jalcar, but we would see what they're proposing. That's right. Okay, proposed rule? Yeah. You know what that is, John? Uh, well, a proposed rule would be, it would be a step before we file. It would be, this is what we're thinking of filing. Right. We come in, we do that. If we're approved, that would be what we file. Now, it still leaves open the question, because Jelcar does can do a lot of different things to a rule. I mean, first of all, it goes to these editors who, who, who nitpick things, and so there are changes. There are, there could be 10, 15, 20, 100 changes, depending on the complexity of the rule, that are made simply because they don't like how it's drafted, they don't think it's clear enough, they think this section conflicts with that one or whatever. So you go through that process in the hearing, and then you actually go to the Jelcar hearing. Right. And you go in, and there might be an objection at something, and, and they would allow a modification to come in, or they might they might object to the whole thing going forward at all. I don't know what that does to you then, or uh, we don't care. But that by time, if we have given you our blessing, then you're then it's then it's, then it's gel cars. We're not conflicting okay. with that gel car process. Okay. So what I'm, we're so saying is that once you have a proposed rule, that prior to you beginning the the, the the intent of our oversight is high level. 
That's what I'm trying to say. It's not nitpicky. We're not trying to micromanage the processes. That. It's directional. Are you going down a road that we don't think is in the best interest of the state of New Hampshire? Um, it's, it's, it's high level directional. Like I said, I have no interest in micromanaging uh, health and human services or the Department of Insurance. Um, that's what we have the department uh, for. Uh, but on the other hand, there is going to be uh, forks in the road. There already have been forks in the road with this uh, with this act that uh, are directional, and I think that that's where I'm interested in, in having oversight because um, we can head in a direction we don't want to go in, and we're wasting a lot of time and effort, and it's going to be uh, controversial. The problem with the current uh, 420L statute is essentially uh, what we have for quote-unquote oversight is not oversight at all. It's just, uh, oh, by the way, I just wanted to inform you that we've made this decision. Um, that's that's not going to work. Um, because even before we file what's called the initial proposal, as distinguished from the final proposal, which is what the Joe Carr actually entertains, um, we do uh, somewhere on the order of three to six months of pre-work because we have to engage all the stakeholders and do all of that. So what I think I'm picking up, and I want to just clarify, is that as part of our three to six months of pre-work that informs the drafting, that we might have sort of an informational item here to helpful. say, this is what we're thinking of doing, yes. and then when we have an IP, potentially we come back? Yes. I would, I've been because I, I wouldn't want us to expend all that energy of three to six months of work on stakeholder engagement only to come here with our initial That's the reason why I initially said down. I want to be up front. I wanted to be as close to the beginning as possible, because I don't want you guys to be wasting a lot of time. I agree. All right, then, then what I would in, infer from what you said here is that we go through that process, we say we just, at some point, we have an idea that's advanced enough to, to come to you and say, this is what we're planning to go with, and you bless it, and then we come back with a more detailed rule. Once you have given that blessing, right. what I'm going to assume from here is that the gel car process would take over, and any changes and that happen any from that, after that we have to address the gel car. Is, exactly. is fair game on our part without coming back to you. I agree, because, I agree. because part of the public hearing process, we may go and redo some section that handles it some different way. Right. And I, I can't see coming back no. for each. No, we don't want you to come back for that. No. We no. just want that blessing no. up front. And if, that's, if we, have, yeah, if we, if we start to get wind that the thing is going the wrong way, that we think yeah. we have a problem, then it's, then it's us at Jell Car. Well, then, then, uh, then okay, so now knowing that, how would you like to change the word well, standard well, and relating to? Well, I would just, the issue of relating to, I'm not sure what okay. that means. Before I initiate, if it just simply said any ruling proceeding under, uh, or any ruling proceeding or otherwise establishing any, uh, yes, I, I want to scratch out is. the word relating. If it simply said before initiating any ruling proceeding under public effect, whatever, or whatever, that's straightforward. Rulemaking. rulemaking is something that's directly required by the act. Right. Or so, like I said, the act. before initiating any rulemaking proceeding, rulemaking and then I under just take bracket, uh, the just relating, and put another bracket on after standard. standard. And, and then, then public act 111. And then the, uh, the commissioner said, say, play for the rule from the joint. You know, just take standard out. I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, so any federal regulations interpretations? Well, that's it's okay. <laughs> not really, but uh, I mean I don't really know what that means okay. either. But, uh, okay. but standards you want out? Uh, I mean, you, you have no standards, but we'll the yeah. act. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you'll well, let, leave interpretation up to interpretation. Well, that's that's talking about the federal <laughs> interpretations. Right. That's talking. So if it's under the act or under Federal regulatory guidance standards are guidance, guidance is? issued under I, that. That I don't know what you, Alex, what you were trying to. These one of the Yeah, we were trying to capture rules uh, for us, rules and bulletins. Well, the law itself and and what they issue is is uh, regulations uh, and the CFRs or or. Uh, right. So when essential benefits come out. What's that? With the essential benefits. Oh, that'll be by rule, by rule of that would be. That'll come out. I mean, you can't a lot by just saying rule. Mm -hmm. I think that's.
guidance. Uh, well, that regulations is rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. regulations same as that. Okay. And so then taking this or standard from out second time there, that would that would make us okay. happy. All right, so what yeah, I, I have here is, is deleting related to otherwise establishing a standard, deleting that, and deleting the word standards. And putting in what? No need to. No, no need to. This is short and sweet. Yep. Shorten it, shorten it. So, so I, the way I agree that before initiating rule 19 proceeding under Public Act 141, whether it's amended, blah, 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 or any federal Regulations, regulations, interpretations, interpretations, okay. guidance. guidance issues are only commissioners shall obtain approval for the rule from the joint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you other very much. Other side of the table okay with that? Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. Good. That was easy. I don't have to deal with budget. Thank you. <laughs> now I want a bigger thing. <coughs> I guess I should ask anybody in the public cares about what we've done so far. Okay, good. good. All right. Uh, before we dismiss that, sorry oh. I missed some of that, um, but uh, is there anything else that the Health and Human Services Department would do besides the rulemaking regarding the federal health reform? That's, that, that's pretty much that's it. That's what I wanted to get. Yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where the trouble could be. I mean, if it's a statute, it's got to come, you know, the RSA is going to come up from the other side. Right, but they're not going to go and enforce federal laws um, without checking with the oversight committee, are they? But, well, they're not empowered to enforce federal law anyway. Well, I know they're not, but they seem to do that. <laughs> it's not as much as our insurance department is, however. <laughs> and, I mean, that's more of, actually, ironically, that's more of a banking insurance problem. Okay. Okay, so now we're back to purpose and scope.
what don't you like about it? Uh, flexible for you? I think that it sets a, a, a position that we are going to be implementing this act, which may be determined to be unconstitutional. Um, and uh, I would rather, um, I mean, I'm going to be fine with two staying in. I'm just doing this for myself. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I would rather it say something like, it's our intention to resist every element of the act until the Supreme Court has a ruling uh, on, on the matter. But, you know, obviously that's not going to work, so I'm just saying this. Well, you, and you're making two assumptions. The first assumption you make is that the Supreme Court is going to hear this issue. They may or they may not. Uh, the second uh, assumption you're making is that they're going to hear this issue before certain uh, implementation deadlines, and the question is going to be, uh, at that point, um, I feel you've, be, you've taken an all-in position, to use poker language, um, that there's no turning back and once you've decided to default into the, uh, the federal program, uh, you're there. They're going to shove it down our throat now. And so now all your hope is on the court. They either save us or they don't. I'm not willing to take that risk quite candidly. I hear you, but the uh, Supreme Court has said they intend to take up this case after the 2012 election. Well, even then, I question the scope of what they've got. They've got, they've got four, they've got four um, circuit court decisions that I'm aware of that relate to this. And then, so what are they going to do? When you say they're going to take it up, they're going to take up the individual mandate. Let's say they even rule the way you want them to on the individual mandate. Does that preclude the act or not? Or are they going to follow the Florida court that said because the individual mandate is so integral to this thing that the whole thing's junk? You're making assumption leaps. I'm scared to make. I mean, quite candidly, uh, Representative Manus, is that uh, my goal is to preserve the sovereignty and, and the uh, uh, authority of the state of New Hampshire. And I think it's a very dangerous strategy to rely on the court to, 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 to save us, so to speak. And, I, and that's why I, I like this clause. Well, I'm just. I, that, I wouldn't want to rely solely on the court either. I would also rely on our Tenth Amendment authority uh, as a state legislature. But then again, it's the court. You can only exercise a constitutional thing through the court system. There, there is nobody else who will help us out. But again, I'm fine with one and two as they are. So, yeah. um, you just want to make sure that you're know, a little queasy. Put my thing out there. <laughs> <laughs> a little air sickness on this one. Though. The point is, is that there's going to be time frames that are already in the law that absence of change in the law, which I'm hopeful for. You know, I think our legislators uh, need to uh, save us. Uh, Senator uh, Shaheen and Ayotte and uh, uh, Representative Bass and uh, Ginta need to uh, salvage us by extending those deadlines or moving those goalposts. But the point is, they're there right now. Right. We've got to live with what's there right now as we draft this law today. That's, that's where the Senate's coming from. Right, and I think that there's certain areas where we should probably uh, not invite them over the bridge, but there's other areas where we need to prop bomb the bridge and get rid of it so that they can't come over. Um, so. But I still uh, would say, no, you just have to have any... They, as I said before, I don't even know what it's going to look like because I don't know what I'm comparing to. But at the same time, once I have a better idea, if it comes back to is, well, all we're going to do is make it, make it more informative so people can choose between the three companies we already have, then I would say, well, what's the point? We already have brokers to do that. We don't need, we don't need this exchange to do it. And why would I want the federal government to force some maybe hugely bureaucratic, expensive, Communication to to basically put brokers out of business. There's um, opportunities for exchanges that are completely free market run, not like Massachusetts does it, but even farther. I think Utah is an example for that. But Utah still has has medical underwriting right now. Right. So um, yeah, I wouldn't want to close that door completely. Okay. That's that's why. I'm that's the reason why the language is written that way. <laughs> okay, but so we all agree that the language is written that way because we want. Right. To give some flexibility to the changing environment that's out there. Right. Okay. So Good. So we have agreement on purpose and scope at this point? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Section two. Um, section two should be pretty benign. 
do we have a problem with the makeup of uh, this committee or not? Do we want to have more representation? Well, you know, the I guess the idea um, that I was looking at with the makeup of the committee was that um, the Senate version did not require committee members from Commerce or Health and Human Services, um, whereas our version required Commerce committee members. This version brings in the Health and Human Services Committee. Um, I, I don't know, I'm fine with it. Um, Senate version where it could be from any any senator or any house member. That's yeah, the, sen the Senate's going to argue for that because we only have 24 people in our body and sometimes the expertise is of where you think it might be. And uh, you know, we've got a lot of committees. Okay. Um, so the Senate president needs maximum flexibility. So we would prefer that uh, that simply read at least for our black clause, clause A, that the uh, by Senate President, end of story. I'm, I'm fine with that. So is that what you want to do with the House tour, just our, our clause A? Well, that leaves uh, it up to the Speaker to appoint the third member uh, from the whole House. Um, yeah, I think it's okay with the House. I like the House. You like the way it is in the House version? Yeah, I like that. One from the House, one from Health and Human Services, and one from yeah, I'll, I'll somebody's fine. own form. That's fine. That's fine. It's a little weird. We have no dog in that fight. So. Okay. Right, well, I guess I, I, I'm just going to. Is there anybody in the public have a problem with the purpose and scope, or we are with purpose and scope? Everybody okay? Um, okay, so next is. Uh, so, <coughs> so Clause A is going to be changed to read two members of the Senate appointed by the Senate President. Period. Right. I like this so far. The lead lunch. I like that. <laughs> Get it down to two pages. Even better. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, and then the terms. Send them. That's why mom sent you the law school. They have Microsoft Word legal edition. Like the library. <laughs> <laughs> the used to get paid by the word. Yeah, right. That was the good old days, right? Now it's fee for service. <laughs> like lobbyists. <laughs> fee for service. <laughs> okay, so like the chairperson for this motion. Okay, is everybody all right? Okay, okay. Okay, yes, yeah. May I go back to B? And we were talking about a one member somewhere from the minority. Right. Yeah, I'm not, not going to agree to that at all. <laughs> Ever. And I would, I, and well, I would, just think, if, yeah. if, it, if it flips, I know, I'm it's going to be all that. Democrats. I'm aware of that. <laughs> what, what no, all the Democrats are much nicer than Republicans because they appointed me. When they they, we may appoint a Democrat to it. I don't know. It's up to the speaker. What's um, what's common in, in a lot of these committees? They got admitted. I'm not that familiar. It is common that. It's very common that you have to come the minority. Okay, on both sides, the Senate and the House, or just the. Uh, I think it's mostly the House. Yeah, it's going to say it. We usually only have uh, sometimes only one number. I would say the one drawback is because Sandy brought that amendment in to the I didn't committee. vote for it. I know, but because she did, we then went on record to being opposed to that. If she hadn't done that, then it would have been fair game to bring it up at this point. But because we've actually taken action against that proposal, uh, I would say for us on the House side, it was somewhat problematic to put it in now. I feel like I'm being run over. I mean, but I that's the say, only thing you're I'm, asking for? <laughs> no, I, I, there's not much I'm going to oppose. Yeah. But, but I don't want, just because I'm a Democrat, I'm not a liberal Democrat, 
I don't want to be blocked from serving on the committee. Right. And I and I would say, assuming that you vote for it, like I did vote for it, then you will get appointed to it. I don't get it. So, I wouldn't split it. Okay. Honest answer. <laughs> you know me. I keep, yeah, I, I stay in my work. Everybody's all set with the big one except with the one uh, deletion under the Senate's representation. Bottom says it's okay, so we'll just go. <laughs> Give me that. Go for it, right? So it's signal there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Page two. Okay. All right, so I see, I see some yellow here. We have something new. New and improved. Um, the yellow comes out of um, the amended version of House. Exactly the amount of authority you're giving the oversight committee, and um, whether we've done it right in this language. Um, so we wanted to have the opportunity to research a little more. But you know, from what we know today, this will work, and it gives the oversight committee you know very high level of very high standard. <laughs> There's a may there. Yes. No shout. Amazing shell, this tower, man. <laughs> There's no urging. I'm actually very pleased to see that um, that section in there. It makes me well, I think more inclined that. to be agreeable. <laughs> good. That's good. Okay. I think we're all set at Roman numeral three. You can help the words of order and hold your peace. Under Roman numeral four. Spend any money, whether received by the. Is this the right section to be talking about? No, no, it's not. The Never mind. No. I'll talk yeah. about that later. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the implementation. Okay. That's under the authority of the commissioner. Okay. So we're all right with four. All right. On to L3, implementation. Number one. Two. 
comfortable that we know what standard means and yeah. that you know what it's you, yeah. you have your standards and you know you know what they are. <laughs> That's gonna be a whole new joke that we can we can look that one for a year again. <laughs> All the human services doesn't have standards. <laughs> Just look that one. Okay, the commissioner shall make periodic reports. It's up to every Let me be a little clear. I mean, Get them all. Um, I believe, and I've studied federal papers and all the historical documents pretty thoroughly, that state legislatures have the authority to declare federal law unconstitutional themselves. They don't need the Supreme Court to do so. Um, and I, I think that it was designed to have the system of checks and balances where the state legislatures another check on federal, on, on out of control of federal authority. And in the case of the Federal Health Care Act, the way I see it, is that this oversight committee can serve as that stopgap for the legislature to make sure that we're saying, you know what, you've gone too far with this provision, we're not going to comply. Um, and uh, I think that we have that authority under the federal system that was set up by the Congress. Well, then I have two questions. First question is, since you've studied this, has the state of New Hampshire ever done that? Yeah, the Real ID Act, very recently. Okay. Very much so. Okay. And then uh, what about other states? Well, there were 26 states that did the same thing that we did with the Real ID Act. So um, the federal government backed down, and now they're trying to push e verify and do the same thing, basically. But, you know, we're. Uh, our law was written in such a way that E-Verify is also nullified. So, and the Democratic legislature did that, by the way. <laughs> so. Feeling are all bad. No, I agree with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, when you see a truck, a Mack truck coming at you, you know you need to get out of the way of it. <laughs> 
So yeah, I mean, we did it recently. It's not like yeah. this is a new concept. Yeah, I don't, but I don't know the, the, the interpretation of that full multiplication. I, 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 not that I want to debate today. <laughs> in here and I'll, I think I will probably when I write the blurb I won't be referring I mean I, I guess I would, could make a request that we add um, to that fourth paragraph um, or as ruled by the legislature just following up on what I said but. what you say is we don't. We don't have rules. We don't. As I always tell everybody, we just make the laws. We don't enforce them. Right, but that's what it would be if you make a ruling, a policy ruling. That would be our violating our statute. Well, but but the, but as a practical matter, we have an oversight committee that can stop things in their tracks. That's the whole. List. Yeah, but the senator's correct. I, I agree. You just want to see how. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, what's your number five? Uh, it wasn't in this section. It was oh, in the authority. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're all set with L3. Okay. I think it was nullification. Yeah, what do you think nullification? Jury nullification, right? <laughs> South Carolina got released from 1829 to 1861. Right. 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 Okay, uh, L4. Authority of the There is a room that will find over here. Okay. Uh, only such only with such prior approval as Roman Joint Health Care. So that new paragraph, is that tight enough for everybody? The first one? Yeah. The new the, the phrasing of the Roman Joint Health Care. And I'm proposing a typo. It should be 420L Roman 2. something to build in there. Okay. So uh, I assume one, two, three, four uh, has been there before and five is new. It's a, just a reorganization. Uh, the same language was in that introductory yeah. sentence and it's moved down. Right. right. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, um, so you want a six? It's, it's hard to, to compare uh, this to Expend any money, whether received by the federal government, yeah, state yeah, government, any other government agency, right. private organization, a non-profit organization, whatever, healthy kids, implementation of the advancement of the act, other non-profits. <laughs> Receiving money from other sources, whoever, whoever else they can shake down. I don't have that. You don't have 
don't have 162 as an empire. No, okay. Why don't you give this? 162 as an empire. How many G's are in circles? Since that's what the circle will basically be in. So we're okay with the five that are there. Or is the uh, uh, in there? Um, take any action or permit. Gave up my coffee. The taking of any action by any state employee, state agent, or by anyone to implement the act. Yeah, that was actually take something that action. Uh, Chairman Hunt had mentioned to me. I don't like action. Well, it sounds like private right of action. Oh, that wasn't the word. The no, but it says take any action. <coughs> or permit the taking of any action. action. Just by any state, any state agent or a regular action. <laughs> <laughs> Some other action. <laughs> Some other active action. That would just bug the crap out of me. These guys that show up, their iPads all over the place. <laughs> 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 no, but but you notice how less paper I have in front of me. Yeah. It just yeah. looks better. <laughs> you spread. It looks like I'm working twice as hard. <laughs> 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 um, I think we're good. So actually, that, that, that was your uh, suggestion, I thought, Mr. Chairman, uh, to ensure that no other department were to go around the insurance department. That was the, right. the rationale for that. Right. Well, well, we did solve that someone because I was worried about helping them. So I think that that's that addressed. Someone solved. Because I, two. it, it yeah. implies that the insurance department is supposed to go beat up somebody for doing something. I mean, and I guess I'm a little hard pressed to figure out how we're going to, how, how we're going to do it. All right, I'll, I'll concede that. I think that it's taken care of in section two. Which is B or G? B. Or both. It should be currently under Roman number two, apply for any grants, funds available under the Act. Does that cover and I guess what you would, you could maybe say public or private. Right. Would that address it? In my mind, it would. Because once you said public or private, that would pick up That's private organization, yeah. nonprofit organization. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I think for me, clean, you want to apply for any public or private grant right. funds public available. Apply for any, yeah, exactly. So, what was that again? I'm saying you should insert those words after the words any. It reads better. Apply for any public or private grant funds available under the Act. Yes. Because yeah. if you throw it at the end, public or private. No, no you don't put it at the end. Yeah. You put it right in the front. Get her up front. I guess the question on that is, are there, is there any change uh, in federal health care reform to the medical assistance program? There is, but it, um, this section deals with uh, insurance commissioners. And so um, there had always been concerns to make it clear. 
clear that what authority the commissioner has to enforce provisions of the ACA it does not extend to the stuff about Medicaid. Right, but which is then going to be picked up by our new paragraph section two. Section two. Um, because I, I don't think I have it with me, but there is a, uh, a article in the Wall Street Journal that indicated that um, part of the Medicaid provisions might. No, we agree. We agree. That's why we're. That's why section two is so important. Two, which is the paragraph we started with. We swept health out. And services. I know. I know. On the health and human services. services the Senate never Medicaid. swept up health and human services on the either version of the Senate. Oh, so section, section two was added to address that. Okay. Because we focus solely on the insurance department and never swept up. Because they're going to force us to pay for a whole bunch of new patients today. I don't think we should have to pay for it. Right. That's, that's why we want okay. section two is so important to me. Okay, good. state insurance law that conflicts with the ACA, um, that it's preempted. And we need that uh, in order to keep the federal government from taking over insurance regulation in specific areas. Uh, the state law is preempted. Now, you know, we uh, were talking a lot yesterday and today with Representative Menunza about, you know, he was very worried about this because the, the original version was very broad brush and just says any conflicting provision of state law is preempted. We don't need that. We rethought it. And what this sets up is a process where um, we would ask the oversight committee to take a look at the particular issue and find that the state law is inconsistent with the federal law, allowing the commissioner to enforce the federal standard until the next uh, legislative session can amend the insurance law. So it's a sort of interim measure. It's pretty sexy. I like it's it. an interim measure that keeps the feds out. I'm very pleased with this. Yeah, I like it. I, I, like I think it's great because it gives us a nice out when it comes to the problem. We can say, okay, we'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. Right. And the statute just tells us. Right, and we'll need coming to this other section. We need to build some on the echo and review that. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
then sweeping them into the Olwood site is what it's doing. I never did that because I figured if I ignored them, they understood that they weren't All right. driving. Here's my concern about doing what they requested before they left. Is, uh, we are told that the federal law includes interpretation of standards or guidance. In terms of insurance. So could the federal government go around the insurance department and have the Health and Human Services Department implementing the act because they don't want to have to deal with the oversight committee? Only to the extent that, that they use the word standard and they're going to try to make a case that the standard wasn't a federal regulation? I don't think that that's going to hold water. His, his point was, I don't know the standard. I don't yeah. Know, I don't and, know that and, word. But, I, but what, what Representative Manus is bringing up is if, if that language was indeed lifted from the federal law, then for consistency's sake, despite the fact that um, HHS objected to it, you know, maybe we, for consistency's sake, leave it in there. say leave it in there and say thanks for your opinion, but um, we're being consistent. Uh, the other side of the argument would be, um, you know, we're, again, we're trying to, uh, your initial statement when we opened this conference was I try to work with the departments that are going to be regulated right. and work with their language because they're the ones that have to operate under it. So that's, that's essentially what the tension here is. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I, I can't say. I'm the guy who left HHS at the curb, so I don't really had to thought those things through. <laughs> They're not here, but I think, I, you know, uh, there's not really any inconsistency with what they're asking for. They wanted clarity about what action to implement the federal law right. they would have to bring before the OSEC committee. And I heard you right. saying rulemaking, any rulemaking. Right. So you right. can say that, but it's any rulemaking that implements the federal law and any federal regulations, interpretation standards, blah, blah, blah. Right. So you keep both. You make clear that it's just the rulemaking that they bring before you. Which is but which is any rulemaking that implements the federal law, which includes any federal guidance that comes out under the federal, right. federal law. How about waivers? Yeah, yeah we, we, we address waivers here. How about, about them insurance them waivers? How about the, this is helping in services of those that by waivers? There are waivers, yeah. yeah. Does, is the waiver done by Let, the rule? Let's go back to that for a minute. What section do we have you do on the waiver? Where, where is that again? Um, section 4, Roman 3. Place the word standard with waiver. <laughs> Just add waivers in there. You didn't know what standard is, but you'll know what waivers are. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll, what you, oh, you'll let them know, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it going to read now? So uh, we'll, we'll, um, I guess, I guess we'll leave, put the language back in and just change the word standard to waiver. So before initiating a rulemaking proceeding relating to, but we're still striking or otherwise establishing any standard, because that doesn't make sense right. there. Right. As amended by Public Act 111-152, or any federal regulations, interpretations, waivers, or guidance issued thereunder. Right. Uh, right. No, that's no. the wrong question. That's okay. the wrong question. So, before so you strike uh, standards there, right? Before initiating any rulemaking proceeding or waiver request or waiver under public law, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm just wondering if we can get a sentence in there to beef up the fact that um, under our direction they will pursue waivers. See, um, I don't know. I, I, I think. Well, you want to be able to order them. I, I do kind of want to be able to order them. Well, now you're really opening up a whole yeah, new thing. I, <laughs> I know that, but 
All this time we were trying to tell him not to do things, and now you want to? I, I gotta admit that I'm... Um, that's a big deal. Well, right. This is uh, the right. This I'm is wondering right. if, uh, haven't we basically given the insurance department control over this? I think we kind of have. That's why I'm, I'm reluctant to draw them in, going back to my original philosophy of leaving them at the curb, uh, because then it looks like we have co-agencies uh, adopting the, uh, or working with the act, and I still want to make sure that we're clear that, you know... Just the insurance. Yeah. Um, we want to. I, I mean, I, I, I don't see anything in here that bars us from urging them to do things. Well, let's, let's, it's certainly I, mean, I, don't think we, I don't think we need, I mean, it, it, the question would be is, do you think there would be a place where we would want them to pursue a waiver and they said no? Yeah, you never know. So I, let's at least, for safety's sake, add or waiver to the obtain approval for any rule or waiver from this just for Insurance. I'm an insurance guy. So where do you want to put? Uh, what are you doing? Now? Gonna, we are going to add the word or waiver. Or waiver request. To, yeah. To waiver the, request uh, after the word proceeding. Yeah. Uh, no, after also, the word rule, the commissioner shall obtain approval. Well, no, I, I am now in life. Where are you? I'm on section two. Section two. If you use some paper instead of that <laughs> fancy device <laughs> over there. <laughs> Before addition to any rulemaking proceed, proceeding. We'll go waiver request. No, 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 no. Okay. Proceeding under Public Act 111, as amended by any federal agency, interpretations for guidance, the commissioner shall obtain approval for the rule or waiver. Oh, there's standard again. Yeah. Oh, geez, where did that standard come from? Okay, for waiver. Yeah. All right, so. Right, I'm going to leave waiver request for that there also. Okay, that's fine, so. And then we were talking like following that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a mistake to put it in. What are you, you can approach the bench. <laughs> 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 okay. If you want to put waiver in there, it doesn't make sense. Because this is just a description of what the feds do. The feds yeah. will not yeah. request a waiver of themselves. Right. Okay. That's a public head. You can be pencil and erase it. So what are, what are we doing now? I think we're inserting two words in the uh, one, two, three, four <laughs> sentence down. Or a waiver request after the oh, yeah, three words. Or a waiver request. After, after proceeding or a waiver yeah. request. We got that. Instead of or standard. That's correct. Okay. Does that make sense? No. That's to me. Okay. So we're... Uh, Commissioner shall obtain approval to the rule for a joint So do we have um, waiver request in two different places in that? At this moment I have, yeah. He does, but I don't. So I didn't follow you on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, may, I may read it out loud to see if this is right. Go ahead. Before initiating any rulemaking proceeding under Public Act 111, 148 is amended by Public Act 111 to 152, or any federal regulation, interpretation, or guidance issued thereunder, the Commissioner shall obtain approval for the rule or a waiver request from the Joint Health Care over Reform Oversight Committee established under RSA 420L2. That's what I have. I don't know that that uh, is completely grammatical, but. Is that what you have, John? Um, I, I thought we would just talk out of. Oh, I, no, I thought you were putting it in a different place. He was putting it in a different place. He was putting it in a different place. Okay. So standard, the standard or waiver. Which should be be in two places. Before yeah. initiating any rulemaking proceeding or yeah. waiver, or waiver request. request. And then right. you repeat it again. The commissioner shall obtain approval for the waiver request. That's what I have. That's what I have. But we eliminated the words standard uh, waiver. So standard is, even though the standard's in there three times, it's been deleted. The word standard is deleted all three times. Well, we left it on the could, first line. Could you no, read? no, we took it out. We took out the whole Okay, so now it says, down. before initiating yeah. any rulemaking proceeding or waiver request. Under Public Act. Under Public Act 111 as amended by the Public Act 111, or any federal regulations, interpretations, or guidance issued there under.
commissioner shall obtain approval for the rule or waiver request from the Joint Health Care Reform Oversight Committee established under RSA 420. Thank you. Okay. Dan Gallery. Okay. All right. I'm not happy with session three. <laughs> um, because I, I, I don't want to taunt the fact that we're maintaining 420L. I know what you're trying to do with the effective date. Can we just make the effective date effective upon the sunsetting of 420L? Um, it was at sunset. July 1st. July 1st. So can we just say effective July 1st wait, rather than have that sentence? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Sunset's July 1st, 2012, not 2011. No. Well, no. no. well, let's see how this iPad yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, I apologize. You get the right equipment. It does have the right equipment. I can pull out the RSA. July 1st. Is I remember because I know we've done this before where we where we ended up passing a bill, the correct a bill that already passed. And, and if we did 1201. We've done that 1201. Yeah, they, they can figure it out. Are we not uh, Okay. Everything? All right, so right now the statute clearly uh, Ray just lost his bet. Yeah, I did. Ray lost his bet that if the act does is effective, the, the expiration takes effect July 1. So that might mean that would be 1201 July 1st. Mm -hmm. So that if we make this act effective July 1st, yeah. then they would be corresponding. That's okay. So we don't, do we still need that section three then? I'm not fully got all my arms around what Section Three does, so that's why I'm on pause. Because mm -hmm. I know I know I got part of what I want, but I'm not sure what 24315. That's chapter law, right? Do I have to look? I have to look at the chapter law 24315. Yeah, right. I'm trying to remember what that is. Well, I don't even, we, even have, we don't have chapter law. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they take it down. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, the last guy, if you're lucky enough, the last person to give you a pet is the... Wow, I would be actually well, willing to take that pet and park it back out. I don't think it's much of a piece of work. And then just leave the repeal it. But it's true. It's true. Do you hear me, John? I'm sorry, I was... I, I, I actually might be more interested in taking that part back out of L4 and leaving the repeal in place. Okay. Um, Unless well, all right, really well, good what rules, what rules have you done? What rules have you done? He's done uh, rape review. And I'm trying to think of... How, what, uh, when you guys went, you got that um, waiver to phase in the minimum loss ratio? Right. Was there any rules around that? No, we haven't. We got the waiver, and um, we don't anticipate having to make any rule? rules. You don't have to. You just do that by bulletin, then. How do you? How do you? How do you uh, get the companies to know that they they can? Phase yes, in? we yeah by bulletin basically we have to done announce it. that we got the waiver, right? Uh, and. You know, what I would be concerned about, for example, is we're undergoing a review right now that will be finished sometime in either beginning or end of July as to whether our rate review meets adequacy standards under the federal law. And if it doesn't, then they have more of a role. So we're trying to make sure we meet their adequacy standards so that they don't have more of a role. So, but I can't say for sure that that applies here, that, you know, but that's the type of concern that I have. So I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure where I'm at, at with you with the interest, because right now, the rule, it's not July, it's not 2011, it's 2012. So my, my attitude would be is, let's remove that whole section three completely. That forces that any rule that was passed prior uh, any rule that was passed in the 2010 session uh, period would have to be reenacted. The rule would have to be reenacted. It would be run by the oversight, the oversight committee to reenact that rule because it's going to the rule. Well, unless you revisit the rule, it will expire. Oh, in other words, if I if we remove section three completely, then chapter 243 colon That's 16. Right. Will Trump will make the rule die yes, by the end right. of the year? That's right. Or next year. So I'm just assuming do that. Um, um, well, no, no. Leaving Section Three in will make the rule die by the end of the year. Uh, that's section no, I I re I interpret this Section Three to say is that they are removing that sunset. Shall not take it back. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, right, yeah. right. Okay, so we do want to remove section three. I'm not a lawyer, nor do I pretend to be one. <laughs> we'll live with that, yeah. So does that mean we, Can you we don't school? need section <laughs> six? <laughs> six <laughs> it's just even the grand jury. Can we see the statute? <laughs> no, I got it. Nobody sees that has to see the statute in the grand jury. <laughs> we don't like your attitude. No, you know what? Uh, that same guy, he made it for attorney, you know, for district attorney. Oh, he came and asked me for a vote. I said, do you remember when I was it's on the... <laughs> I didn't really like you then, so I'm not sure I remember him over you now. That was what uh, John did for us uh, last year, is get the sunset. Yeah. That was my battle. That was the only... So you're going to keep the sunset. I want my sunset. Yeah. i got to be consistent, right? I fought for it yeah. last night. Section 3 is gone, no. Section 4 becomes Section 3, and it's yeah. changed to 7 1 2011. Take effect 7 1 2011. Right? Is it 7 or is it 7? July 1, 2011. Because I thought we had to do a time. No, but because I, I just realized, I thought about it longer. Okay. The way the statute says it's, it expires. July 1st. It didn't say June 30th or anything. It says it expires July 1. So okay. that means July 1, 1. 12, 12 o'clock, right, right. midnight, okay. gotcha. the old law expires, and then this new law takes effect. So do we need, uh, <coughs> under 420 L2, uh, paragraph 3, to highlight the section? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Because 
because everything everything is going to expire. Yeah, so we get to look at it. So we, we want to look at it. Yeah. We have to look at it. Well, so, no, man, I want to understand this, okay? <laughs> if it all expires, then why are you reviewing it? Because we might want to renew them. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. Okay, um, the last point that I had... <laughs> I'm fighting for you here, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> the last point that I had on um, the difference here uh, is just uh, number two in 162, um, help reform coordinator position. Oh, coordinator. Yes, what happened with the coordinator? <laughs> position never got filled. Position, yeah, that we got last year um, that we needed in order work on the implementation. It's not filled. The function is being performed through a position uh, one of our market comment people uh, that we hold, which is allowing Peter to take off. And uh, we're asking that you not touch that position. We, the department lost two positions this year in this budget already. And um, you need it in order to be able to Just deal with all this. Neil Kirk. Well, because insurance is self-funded, so insurance oh, is self-funded, so they the money just falls out of the sky. It's not no, charged to guys like me you. that own uh, insurance. Are you guys these brokers assess? No, it's only oh, only domestic companies are exempt. Actually, probably high and high. What's that? Yeah, so so you like the as to his commission. I'm going to be moving into the DOI sometime this summer. We're going to be looking at a lot of things. Well, I mean, that's part of our, our bill, so certainly something we're supposed to defend. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I missed the logic there, so I hope you have. If you're not, the position's not filled now. You're right, so very much need to pay it all, yeah. but it still comes out in the wash with the assessment to, yeah, the, the, to the domestic. Right, and we're not a general fund funded agency. Yeah, so it's still coming out. There's no, right. no actual savings. But you say we really need the position because we lost two. Mm -hmm. That's where you really lost me because you haven't really filled it. You're not really using. You're just sharing. We uh, you, you, we're fulfilling that function by pulling someone out of our market conduct unit. Right. And that and that function needs to be replaced. So you're market. you're saying is that if we don't do anything, then you will go out and hire a person to do this job because you're not going to keep wanting to pull that other guy. What's his name? Al, Al. Sure. yeah. Uh, or are you going to give Al a job and you can go out and hire somebody else to fill Al's job? We would, oh, this is like a management thing that I haven't been discussing now in public here. Um, we would need someone to continue doing the function that Al is doing now. Okay. And then we would also have to figure out how to backfill the market comment function that he was doing. That's why we need to, to keep that position. I'm asking you, and then we can you know, <laughs> don't take it away. We've already lost two positions this year. So we want to keep the market conduct. Is that a, is he go after brokers? Is that what we're going to do? Is that the uh, brokers? Brokers are very well behaved. <laughs> it's only the companies themselves. What do you think about that? <laughs> I can tell you it's a few of the words. Right. How about agents, too? Yeah, it is. Does market conduct and agents get drawn yeah. into market conduct? Well, it's um, tied to insurance companies, audit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This position was created oh, last year. So it was created in the statute. I mean, I guess my concern is, is the guy going to be spending his time um, implementing this act that we don't want to implement? Or is he going to be spending his time saying no to the federal government and helping us keep saying New Hampshire, New Hampshire? Helping us say no, because he'll have a big no stamp. Right. I think, you know, the department has demonstrated through the work on this bill that we're interested in being in very close oversight. We don't want to be out there making policy. We want the legislature to do that. And we're actually grateful because there is this oversight committee, and there will be, um, to establish the policy. And it's not our role to establish policy, but to implement the policy that's established. And that does take a lot of work, especially when you're dealing with the federal government. All right. Any other questions?
I could go either way. I'm sorry, Alex. I'm sorry. I think you guys are all moving people around anyways. When I went when I, when I went to the oversight meeting, it was like half of the insurance department was in the room. Yeah. Trying to be very right? I mean, wasn't there like a, like eight people in the department in the room when we had that oversight committee? That meeting? Right. It's so bad. Well, it's so <laughs> you were not one guy. You got eight people in the room. No, that's what I'm saying. I could go yeah. either way. It doesn't seem like you. You guys were short on time, were short on bodies to, you know, be worried about this issue. <laughs> that's great. So, that's why I could go either way. I would support Alex. I think there's a lot of work to do on this. And, yeah. and I think maybe... Well, yeah. I mean, and the functions that are, the insurance department is doing already with the people they have, need to be maintained, and this is a huge amount of work. Well, when you have so many... I'm going to make a declaration of intent right now. Oh boy. I need to publicly disclose that I am regulated by the New Hampshire Insurance Oh, Oh, so now you're backing up. <laughs> and I pay uh, fees to the New Hampshire Insurance Department. So uh, uh, I'm going to... Uh, well, so is... Well, I'm technically saying the same thing. Okay, well, well you, you should be making a public declaration of intent. So, so you're both taking Rule 16 on this one? Well, I'm going to file, I'll file a declaration of intent with the, um, with the uh, Secretary. Well, they don't have to do anything if we don't if we issue if we don't mention that. Either way, either way, I I, I, I think think we probably leave this. Feel like you feel like now that we've had this discussion. Yeah, now that we've had this discussion, I have to disclose it. Feel like you should tell I have a financial interest in this question. So, what is your position on this question? I'm not going to declare a position because I have a financial interest, and that's the effect of the plan. Otherwise, financial interest because you pay. Fees up the wazoo. Um, <laughs> I, I see. I see. So you're telling me their fees are not you're, they're not flat, but they they're they're, they're, they're flat fees. You're flat fees. They are flat fees, but they're fees nonetheless. And no, but you're, the, the, this cost of this position is assessed to the domestics, not assessed to the domestics. It's assessed. So what difference does it make, man? You're you're a liberal. What the heck happened to you? <laughs> you got me confused with somebody else. <laughs> Go back and tell that to all my Democrats. It's, it's, not, it's not a deal breaker for me, but my inclination is to cut the position. You would like to see the position cut? I mean, I put it in there the first time. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a deal breaker. It's basically. Right. <coughs> so I'm deferring to you, John, to make the decision. Oh. John, I thought you'd like to work with the department. I, I, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she just stopped you, man. That's great. That's really helpful. I would say it would, would be nice to have a person who I could. Because wasn't this originally this person was going to build a consumer protection? No, that's a separate. And that's, that's a separate. No, this is yeah. health reform coordinator. That's yeah. the title of the position. I mean, is, is this there definitely be someone who can answer your question? Yeah, but I, I, I want to be go, able. It's the go-to yeah. person yeah. that I we want, say, you know, <laughs> that what, what they tell us this is what the, you know is coming down the pike, and you better be aware of this. And it's right. the go-to person. Right. How, the, how about yeah. we uh, we change the title to health no reform coordinator? <laughs> Which, which time? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's your baby, even if it 
listening to the whole way, and uh, you, you also did a lot of great work on it last year, I remember, because I came whining to you. Oh, really? Uh, as a citizen. I, I don't even remember that. I guess I do remember yeah. that. Right, eh? Do you remember when I was a citizen? <laughs> <laughs> I still have the signs in my garage. <laughs> I heard about you a long time ago. <laughs> Just have 162 um, the, um, the committee conference is killed with the old um, agreed, agreed to disagree agreed to leave this bill is not necessary. Okay. And I'll have a line of job on that one also. Okay. Okay. Great. Now, uh, before you run off, is there any other committee conferences that we're on that we should get um, I got my master list is um, SB 50 has been scheduled. I don't know if you're on it, but I am. Okay, well, it's already been scheduled. It's in my calendar. And then there's uh, 161, but I don't think that's a commerce one. Um, I guess I'd, I, yeah, all right. I all guess right. I have to worry about his house bills. I, guess I don't think there's anything else from us. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll go over to the, to, uh, the house clerk's office. I'll be around, around for a short time. i gotta, I got to see some more at 4 o'clock, so okay. um, I'll hang out for it. All right. Great. Thanks for your help. Okay. 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 Is there any house bills? Any house bills I need to schedule? Thank you. I love that. That made my day. No way.